Apollo 13 was a team effort from the very beginning to the end. Okay, yes, sir, we've had a problem here. Go ahead. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. When the crew threw the switches to start the crowd stir, a spark jumped between the fan and the heater assembly, and the pressure in that tank rose very rapidly because the insulation had been damaged on the system. And we now had a fire inside the tank that blew the dome of the tank off. That made me bus vulnerable. That series of events started the saga of Apollo 13. And we had a pretty large bang associated with the um, caution and warning there. The uh, exact words I used in mission control is we have never lost an American in space and we sure as hell aren't gonna lose one now. This crew is coming home. You gotta believe it. Your team must believe it, and we must make it happen. It looks to me you're looking out the uh, hatch that we are inventing something. When we suddenly realized the true significance of the explosion, seeing the oxygen escape from the rear of my spacecraft, and consequently losing all the electrical power and the propulsion system, we knew we were in serious trouble. You called in your backup becomes now, see if we can get some more brain power in this we thing. We got one here. Roger. Throughout the entire Apollo 13 mission, the teams in mission control changed shifts almost regularly at eight hour intervals. And the teams kept the mission going, kept working the problem as my teams tried to come up with the answers. Go ahead, Light. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the limb to sustain life. Fortunately, the lunar module was attached to us, and when that occurred, with oxygen almost gone in the command module, we transferred the command to the lunar module and tried to use it somehow, some way, as a lifeboat to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. I got a lot of recognition for the work that we did, but the real heroes of Apollo 13 were the people in the back rooms and over in the engineering facilities who came up with the answers we needed. We never talked among ourselves about not making it back home. It was like uh, playing a game of solitaire. As long as we had a card and we could put it someplace, the game kept going. And every crisis that we came up to, we found a solution. As we rounded the moon and my two companions uh, looked at the place where we were supposed to land, and they were very much disappointment, I said, we're on our way home. Let's get home successfully and forget about the landing. And there's one whole side of that spacecraft missing. Is that right? So the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, entrance. It's really a mess. Man, that's unbelievable. I've got a... Okay, copy that. They're well Aquarius, and we thank you. Apollo 13 has to rate with anything we ever do because it took a great deal of ingenuity, a great deal of preparation, years of preparation, a lot of guts on the part of the astronauts themselves to bring that off. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Apollo 13, Apollo 13, this is recovery, over. The recovery, Apollo 13 is descending. Ah, under Apollo 13, this is recovery, and your shoots look good. So you have to say that Apollo 13 was a fantastic moment in the history of manned spaceflight. I will tell you that we had one of the most bodacious uh, splashdown parties that I can remember when those guys got back. Just so happens to 
steps and all the different pieces of hardware and all of it had to work and it's just inconceivable that we could do something like that the motivation was well I, it ain't going to be my part that screws up you know I want to get it right and apparently everybody else felt the same way and we did it and did it and did it and did it Look how- Apollo 17 was probably one of the more interesting missions because uh, we had a real geologist there and they landed in a, you know, in a wonderfully interesting place. The Valley of Torres Littrow was picked as a landing site for a couple different reasons. Uh, Number one, it was in an area of the moon we had never even come close to. And it was a valley some 20 miles long and five miles across, which was literally surrounded by mountains higher than a Grand Canyon is deep. Yeah, 1.2 kilometers is a long way from the left. Look at the Challenger down there. Make you get a feel for how big this valley really is. I'd rather not. <laughs> Holy smiley. <laughs> Why are we on a slope? Oh, that damn it. Hey, Gene, would you, have, would, would you go over and help twinkle toes, please, Gene? Really. We stopped, uh, obviously, at uh, a lot of different plan places, and we did everything from drilling core samples to setting up experiments to drilling trenches and so forth. There is orange soil. Well, don't move it till I see it. And I thought, okay, this scientist has been on the moon too long. He's been, he's been breathing too much oxygen. There's not going to be any orange soil. Hey, it is! I can see it from here. It's orange. We not only did a lot of work on the moon, but we had a good time. And you know you're only going to come that way once in your life. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May, May. I just looked around and uh, knowing we were leaving, no, we weren't coming back. And I, uh, I said, we now leave as we once came. And God willing, as we shall return. This valley of history has uh, seen mankind complete its first evolutionary steps into the universe, leaving the planet Earth and going forward into the universe. No more significant contribution has Apollo made to history. This American pie drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was gone. Right away, Houston. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing, this will be the day that I die. 